Hey, what's going on, folks? My name is Tezza Dude, and welcome to episode three of In the Bullpen, the show, where an unlikely duo of a Brit and American come together to talk about the great sport of baseball. And with me is Dunbar Snapbar, as always, if you'd like to say hello, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Oh, well done. He's learning so <laughs> fast. <laughs> That's a joke. My little boy's all grown up. Oh. <laughs> anyway, today in episode three of In the Bullpen, we uh, are going to be talking about, well, it's the first month has come to an end of uh, the regular season. And we're just going to kind of talk about some little highlights in the news that we thought were interesting and also kind of talk about uh, the team standings, where they are and did we expect them to be where they are and how have people done better and you get the gist of what we're trying to say. Well, that is what we're going to cover today. So without further ado, I'm going to let Jeff start this off. Cool. All right. So really just to kind of set the record straight just from the beginning, um, I know after the first month and Tom, correct me if I'm wrong here, um, I really don't say that. You know, the month of April is going to give us an indication of what things are going to be like at the end of the regular season. But I do use it as a focal point to go ahead and then determine, all right, well, if this is where they were at the end of April, and if at the end of May they're in the same spot, then that kind of leads me to believe that there's a pattern really forming, and, and those are the expectations I can set for a team. So while this doesn't tell us everything, I think this does give us an indication of what we can expect from some teams. And down the road, we can use that to solidify how, how teams are going to do. So, um I don't know, Tom, just off the top of your head, what's the biggest surprise for you, I guess, right now? Uh, where it's at? The biggest surprise? Now, that, that's a really tough one. I mean, I'm glad to see the Braves where they are. That, that's nice for them to, uh, you know, to be at the top of the National League East. And I think overall, yep, overall the National League. So that is nice, especially without Chipper Jones. You know, that'd be, it's sad that they couldn't do it last year. But um, that's been a, you know, kind of a, a big focal point for me as well as Miami sitting dead at the bottom like it must be so distressing to be a Miami fan right now yeah you know so the National League's a bit um, it's a bit odd but uh, not not too many things are a shock Cubs are sitting near the bottom as are the Padres the Mets you know Miami so uh, not too many shocks in the National League and not too many shocks in the American League either. Obviously, the uh, the Astros sitting at the bottom. Cleveland sitting at the bottom-ish as well, which was a bit of a shock after they had a good uh, spring training. Uh, Toronto not doing so well, which you predict, which you actually uh, did predict. Yes, I got it right. You got it right. You should have put some money on at the bookies. Dang it. And the Angels not doing as well. I thought they might do quite well. As, uh, just my opinion, I thought they'd do okay this season. Um, Hamilton, obviously, a uh, risky trade, but a good trade overall because he is a solid player. But uh, they seem to be struggling as well. So, yeah, so far it's not too many shocks, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, just kind of taking a look at it, the, the Rockies, I think, in the National League are the biggest surprise for me because I wasn't expecting them to be leading the Central, you know, when they were. Um, now I think, aren't they tied right now? Yeah, them and the Arizona. Central. Okay. So, um, or in the West, yeah, my I bad. Yeah, I say West. <laughs> no, it's all right. I make mistakes. Um, but yeah, I mean, when they were, were leading the West, I mean, I thought that was ridiculously awesome because, like I said, Colorado just came out of nowhere. Um, in the American League, I got to say that seeing the Royals on top of the Central has been a surprise for me. And I actually really enjoy seeing the Royals up there because everybody over the last few years have been like, it's all Tigers, 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 Tigers. Uh, I just like seeing Kansas City up there right now, just to kind of mix things up a little bit. But, Tom, do you think either one of the teams, the Royals or the Rockies, can really hold that top spot? That is a good question. You've got to think that Kansas City had such a good spring training because they were using a lot of the youth squad. Uh, youth meaning inexperience. And at the start of the season, if you put out these players who did so well in spring training, these young players who are inexperienced and aren't used to being in the limelight as much, can they hold on to that uh, sorry can they deal with that pressure all the way through the season you know they might come out and have a blistering start as Kansas City have done you know they're, they're 13 and 9 at the moment uh, which is a really strong showing for a team that no one really expected them to be where they are and you think can they hold that out for the rest of the season I'm not sure if they can um, I'd like to see them do it because it'd be so impressive to see them dethrone the Tigers from that from that central spot yeah I mean I don't know. The Royals, especially with where they're at, I mean, I've been kind of keeping track on them a little bit. With me in Nebraska, too, a lot of my friends are actually Royals fans. And just, like, you know, the way that they feel about having that top spot and what they think they can do, I think it's going to take the Royals a long way. Um, I'm still undecided as to whether or not they're going to win the division. 
the Rockies, I don't think they'll be able to hold on to that spot. I mean, they're already tied right now with uh, the Diamondbacks for that spot, and I, I don't think they'll be able to hold it that much longer. But the Royals, I can see going the distance with this. Um, that would be a really, really cool story because, I mean, last year around this time, everybody was like, ooh, the A's and the Orioles, are these guys for real? You know, because they were rocking it in the month of April. And a lot of people are like, no, this is just a fluke. And we saw how that ended up for them. And I'm hoping that with the Royals, it, it kind of ends up being the same thing. But um, overall, yeah, you mentioned it. Not really too many surprises right now. Um, I guess one more in the American League. Um, you know, just kind of piggyback off of what you said. Toronto, 9-17. and Nuh-uh. I mean, so I didn't cool. think that they were going to be in the top, but I didn't think they were going to be in the cellar either. No, I didn't expect him to be at the bottom. And if anything, it's sad to say, but I expected Tampa to be kind of sitting at the bottom a little bit. Yeah. Well, for a while, anyway. I, I thought there'd be a bit of a struggle. Uh, I think it's really nice as well, on a side note, to see Boston doing so well in the East at the moment. Boston fans, or Red Sox fans, really deserve a better season than they got last year. Amen. So that is one thing for that. And then also it's nice to see the team doing well, especially after the atrocities uh, that happened in Boston. Yeah. during the marathon so you know it, it, even in England you hear about these things and I was just so shocked when it was when it was all going down I was just quite to, to coin the term <laughs> blown away but yeah. um, no it's so sad and it's really nice to see Boston you know giving the fans and the people of Boston something positive to talk about so what do you think about the Angels are they going to turn it around or do you think they're going to stay where they're at I, having problems it's hard for the Angels at the moment. Uh, they're getting a lot of bad press. You know, they should be doing better than this. And this, they've got such a good side. Mark Trumbo, Albert Pujols, Josh Hamilton. <laughs> That's three big names straight away. Three power hitters. Mm -hmm. uh, Trout, obviously an incredible player. And you just think, what is going on in, in, the, in the mind of the Angels? I'm not sure whether it's bad coaching or... Just the players not gelling well together as seems to be the problem that's happening in Toronto. I can't work it out. I, I can see them turning it around because there's no way that they're just going to sit there like in that kind of fourth spot for the whole season. That's just not going to happen. This is the Angels. Where I think, where, where were they? Like, so they were third last season mm -hmm. um, because obviously there was that massive fight at the end between Texas, Oakland and the Angels. So... I don't know. I can see him turning it around, definitely. I can't see Seattle holding on to that spot for too much longer. And Houston and Seattle will be back at the bottom. No disrespect to any Seattle fans. Right. Yeah, I think that they're going to finish third and not make the playoffs. I mean, I don't know what it is. I, I think it definitely is a mental thing that's causing them not to be able to do well. Because it wasn't just you know how this season was starting off. But last season was a disappointment. And the season before that... And, I mean, when a lot of people were like, okay, Angels have Josh Hamilton. This is the final piece that they need. Uh, definitely not turning out that way, and that's really what I was expecting it. I mean, Josh Hamilton, he's a 301 hitter for his batting average in Major League Baseball, and right now he's hitting 219. So there's, you know, a lot of problems taking place right there. I mean, he is obviously hitting for power. He's got the eight home runs, but I don't know. It's just... I would expect more out of him. I would expect more out of the Angels, but they need to turn something around fast, and you know they need to identify what that problem is. Because I, I mean, I don't know off the top of my head what's what could be their problem, but something just isn't there. Yeah, it's definitely a, a struggle mentally, like you say, whether the players aren't gelling together. Because people like Jose Reyes and Jose Bautista at the uh, at the Blue Jays, you'd expect them to be doing so well at the moment. Their averages are just nowhere near what anyone expected. Yeah. So I think it's a similar issue. issue issue that both teams are having right now and if it's something that they can overcome and maybe work on through the season then easily Toronto and, and the Angels have got the lineups to turn uh, where they are in the season now around and get straight back to the top of the divisions potentially because mm -hmm. you can see maybe uh, if injuries go the wrong way for Oakland or Texas that'll damage them badly uh, you know if, if for example if the A's lose Coco Crisp that is that's a bad time for the uh, for the A's, and that mm -hmm. something like that is really a good thing for the Angels mentally to try and want to take advantage of. So, who knows? Anything can affect it, but right now they just don't seem to be working well together. Yeah, you know, I just thought I, I wonder if it's you know, like if you're on a team who's like, yeah, these guys are expected to be on top, 
I mean, you're really not going to play as hard, I think. You know, for, for some players, they might not play as hard. It's like, oh, we've got this one in the bag. I mean, look who we're going up against. You know, the A's, that was a fluke. The Rangers, they lost Hamilton um, and a couple other players, too. And, you know, you've got everybody else who's in there, too. The, the Mariners and the Astros, you know, you just kind of throw them aside. No offense to anybody, but... Um, <laughs> You know, Angels probably went into the season being like, we've got this in the bag. And, you know, I have I watched a couple Angels games. And, you know, Hamilton, I think, might be the definition of, of what's going wrong because, you know, a lot of pitchers, pitchers would throw low at him, and he would just swing at everything that was ridiculously low. I mean, it would bounce in the dirt, and he would swing at it. And he would just walk away, you know, unfazed, you know, just not, not caring about anything. And... I'm just wondering if they're like, oh, yeah, that's okay. We're down right now, but, you know, we're going to end up on top. But it's not like a motivating thing, if that makes sense. It's just they expect to get there, and they don't feel like they have to work to be able to get uh, get to that point. Yeah, exactly. You know, the problem is you can't, you can't, it's like, what was the saying? Uh, one bad apple spoils the barrel kind of thing. Yeah. So if, if Hamilton's got this kind of, uh, you know, not really interested attitude and I'm better than this and we should just be doing it anyway and I should just be able to smash it out of the park without even trying, uh, then that's going to affect the rest of them. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't have this negative attitude and like you say, it's a mental thing, going back to that kind of saying, it's a mental thing and the team's not gelling. Um, it doesn't really help your teammates, you know, one by one. You can They'll all lose heart and they'll all end up either with the same attitude or arguing. Mm -hmm. So it's not beneficial to have someone on your team like that, like someone like Hamilton with that kind of attitude at your team. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's just Hamilton. I, I don't want anybody to think that. But, I mean, he's definitely an example of what's going on. But, um, anyway, we got a couple good things, I guess, to be able to talk about. Um, there was one thing, and, and I don't think I mentioned this to you, Tom, so I'll, I'll just take this one. But uh, Mariano Rivera with nine saves already on the year, that puts him at third overall in uh, the American League, and he's just one save away from the top spot. So that's really cool to see, you know, Mariano Rivera in his last season not being able to play uh, last season too, just be able to bounce back and have those kind of numbers. At that age, that's ridiculously impressive. I think that's really cool. Well, I can kind of actually relate to it in an odd kind of way because Carlos Marmol, who obviously is... Uh, the Cubs closer, or not the first choice closer now, because we did by uh, Kuji Fujikawa. Uh, but Marmol's uh, Fujikawa's injured. Say that, and... say that three times fast. <laughs> Kuji Fujikawa, Kuji Fujikawa, Kuji Fujikawa. Oh. Yes! That was impressive. Oh, yeah, I tried. Anyway, <laughs> I've kind of lost my point now. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Fujikawa's injured, and uh, Marmol's had to step in. And he is actually blowing saves and getting saves, and it's kind of weird the situation that the Cubs have with closers at the moment because we've got um, oh it's his name thingy I forget his first name but he's called Greg um, and he's like a really old closer and I'm not sure why the Cubs have him at the moment on our roster um, I'm really kind of confused as to why we have him and then we've got Marmol and we've got all these old closers who just aren't performing so it's great to see an older closer doing as well as um, Rivera is yeah that yeah, is awesome really cool. to be able to see. I, I mean, I didn't doubt Mariano Rivera, but, I mean, just to be able to see him there, that's really cool. So, um, and then King Felix's 100th win. Woo, King Felix. That's awesome. So, I asked you this. Do you think that it's more impressive that he got his 100th win uh, with the Seattle Mariners as opposed to somebody else who's on a better team? Yeah, that, that is a tough question. And also, leave your thoughts on that one in the comment section below, guys, because that is a kind of a, it is a really kind of tough one because this kind of also goes back to the, uh, you know, uh, getting a perfect game against the Astros. Is it easier because it's the Astros or is it a good pitcher? It's one right. of those kind of similar questions, but uh, essentially, I don't know. I think it is kind of impressive that he got it with the Mariners and no disrespect to Mariners fans again. Uh, the Mariners obviously are no world beaters, but they've got a solid team. And it is impressive that he's stuck with them, and it's good of him that he's stuck with the Mariners. I mean, obviously, they've had to pay a lot of money for him. Mm -hmm. But um, no, to get his 100th win with the Mariners, I think also one shows you can't take anything away from the team as a whole, because it's a team game, so, you know, well done to the Mariners, but also well done to King Felix. It just shows what a class pitcher he is. and what an absolute world-class pitcher he is. Yeah. 
I mean, you, you, if you think about like all the numbers that goes with pitchers, I, I don't think that all the numbers are really indicative of how well a pitcher is. Because if you're on a team where you don't have the bats, enter Felix Hernandez, you know, the wins and losses is going to be a lot tougher uh, on you. And also, of course, the ballpark that you play into is a factor. So I think it does say a lot about him getting those 100 wins with the Mariners, um, you know, because oh, I don't want this to come off wrong. But I mean, if you've got a team with a lot of bats, like, you know, let's talk about the the Yankees in the 90s and, you know, the 2000s. Um, you know, there was a lot of great bats on that team, and it was easy for them to be able to produce runs at will. And so you could put in a, you know, mediocre pitcher and just rely on, you know, the other eight guys on the field or, or nine guys with the DH to go ahead and get the runs, and you still get the win at the end of the day. So me personally, I think it is a big deal. But, yeah, I think it's kind of cool. I, I can't wait to see what people say about this. So make sure you do comment. And let let us know what you think. Yeah, exactly. Because that it will be interesting to because there's obviously going to be conflicting views, Mariners fans, and then you know any other fans, fans of Felix, and just fans of the idea of a team rather than just a pitcher. But uh, yeah, in the comment section below, guys, we'd like to know what you think on that one. And then what was the next thing we were going to talk about? Uh, Strasbourg. Are you worried? Strasbourg. Am I worried? Uh, without a doubt, no. Strasbourg has proven himself um, before. I don't think Nationals have to worry at all. Uh, it's just silly. Like I know he's. What's his actual statistics at the moment? Uh, right now he's one for four wins and loss with an ERA of three sixteen. Yeah, there's a there's a long way to go yet. Like. That can easily be turned around. You know, he could be having an off day or the bats just might not be going that day for him. You know, mm -hmm. he, he can shut out every single person but one. And then if, mm -hmm. if the rest of the team doesn't get a hit, he, you know, or doesn't put any runs on the board, then the batters obviously aren't doing their jobs as well. So I, I don't think it's Strasbourg's fault. I think he will obviously come back fighting and I don't think the Nationals have too much to worry about at the moment either. Right. Um, no, I'm really not too worried. I mean, everybody kind of starts off with a little bit of a slump. And, and with Strasburg, I mean, if you take it and you break it down per game, some games it takes him maybe one or two innings to really get into it. So if you kind of put that in the perspective of the season, it may take him, you know, a month or so to get in the swing of things. So, no, I'm not too worried. But uh, it was an interesting interesting thing that I had, had seen on, on some baseball blogs, like people just going crazy like, is Strasburg already done and over with? You know, was last year just a fluke? I mean, obviously not the case. Yeah, without so. a doubt. And obviously, like, towards the end of the season, they were pushing Strasburg so hard. Mm -hmm. Like, he's got to be so worn from that. Like, he was probably welcoming, you know, of the break. And then he's obviously could easily still just be in that break mode. He's, he's not in hitting the peak of the season yet. Teams mm -hmm. don't have to worry too much. Yeah, you've got to remember as well, only a month in, teams are still trying different rotations out. This is like the end. This is like spring training point two. Mm -hmm. You know, people are still trying different rotations and different people in different positions. And most teams have nothing to worry about, really. Like, right. we, say, like we say, the standards at the moment, if we start to re recognize a pattern from here on out, mm -hmm. then that is going to be something to take note of but for now i don't think too many teams have too much to worry about no kind of interested to see where this goes you know for the rest of the season and it'll be awesome but yeah i mean this is a great point for us to take a look at and be like all right here's where they're at did the teams improve did they get worse did they stay the same and that'll that'll let us know a little bit more but yeah indeed i would always i would also like to say i am just shocked by the cubs 9 and 15 i was i was hoping more i thought it was going to be our year cubs fans uh, if there's any of you out there, it's always going to be our year, and uh, we will come back because it was you're talking about uh, Strasbourg, and it's really shocked me that we got Edwin Jackson and there was so much hype around him, and so much promise for this pitcher that we managed to get hold of, and um, he really hasn't done much so far. Like I think I saw his first win the other night against mm -hmm. Miami, and Rizzo like carried the team. Oh no, that was the other day. Hang on. I'm confused because we've out of the four game series, we just won three and we lost tonight. So it had been two days ago. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, Carlo, uh, Luis Valbuena homered in like the top of the ninth, and we won that game. And Jackson got the got the win, and Marmol nearly blew it, uh, nearly <laughs> blew the save. 
by putting two men on the base and then managed to get out of it somehow but like um yeah i was really i'm really kind of shocked by jackson for the cubs because there was so much promise for him but like i say same with Strasbourg. It's, it's early days yet yeah i'm kind of liking where the a's are right now especially with their clutch uh hitting and stuff so guard won it for us in the 10th inning against the orioles um off of a and over to third I can't remember who laid down the bunt, but he goes from third. It was a bad throw and ends up going home. So I love being an A's fan because I get a whole bunch of walk-off, you know, hits and stuff. So yeah, but would you I'm rather like rely? On, but would you rather rely on walk on walk-off hits, you know, leaving it till the death, so you're biting your nails till there's nothing left but bone. I know it's terrible that we rely on it, but it just makes for great baseball. Exactly, but would you not rather see an entertaining game and? You know, I don't. I don't know. I'm just. I'm just trying to make a point of arguing right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're all right. Let's get into the conflict stage. Now it's argument time with Tezer and Dunbar. How dare you? Ow. <laughs> anyway, yes, <laughs> that could make an interesting show. <laughs> we should do one where we just argue with each other the entire time. No, we shouldn't. Just for the sake of it. No, we shouldn't. That'd be. Gosh, dang it, we should. No, we shouldn't. Yeah, we, yeah, we should. No, I'm not agreeing to this. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there a Monty Python sketch about that? Yeah, the argument yeah. clinic. Yes. It's brilliant. But then, he, but then he goes, you're not arguing anymore. That's just contradictory. He goes, I want my money back. <laughs> no, you're not having it. I want my money back. <laughs> yes. I might have to watch that one now. It is brilliant. <laughs> my wife just brought in cookies. <gasps> oh, I don't have a wife. I don't even have cookies. Mine's pretty awesome. Well, both, the wife and the cookies. Dang it. Need to get me one of those wives. Did you hear her? Yes. <laughs> right, the wife wins. Yeah, it's true. I won't argue. Well, I think this kind of wraps this episode up. I agree. I've got some cookies to eat. So there you go. We couldn't carry this on for hours, but Jeff's too busy <laughs> eating cookies. Sorry, folks. Blame him. <laughs> They're really good, though, and they say we love you, and one has, like, a mustache on it. It's frosting. It's not like a real mustache. Jeff just lost 10 man points. <laughs> well, before hey, Jeff... I put up lights today, so <laughs> I get 10 man points. So you're back to even. Yep, I'm good. Well, before we get any more off topic and before you lose any more man points, I am going to say thank you for listening to episode 3 of In the Ball Pen, guys. I have been Teza, he has been Dunbar. Jeff. Yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Yeah, he's too busy stuffing his face. Goodbye. Yeah.